Hi everyone, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Med Simple at dialopathology.com. The topic which I am covering today is aneurysms. So in this short tutorial, we'll be discussing about the definition of aneurysm, the various types of aneurysms, the pathogenesis of aneurysm, and in detail about the various types of aortic aneurysms. Now what is an aneurysm? Aneurysm is a localized abnormal dilatation of the blood vessel or the heart which may be congenital or acquired. So this is a normal a caliber of a blood vessel, a cut section, whereas this is the abnormal dilation of the blood vessel, that's aneurysm. So aneurysms can be classified as true aneurysm and false aneurysm. False aneurysm is also referred to as pseudo aneurysm. What is this true aneurysm? It involves all the layers of an intact arterial wall or the thinned ventricular wall of the heart. For example, atherosclerotic and congenital vascular aneurysms are true aneurysms. Ventricular aneurysms, particularly post-transmural myocardial infarction, that is an example of true aneurysm. Whereas false aneurysm or pseudo aneurysm is basically a defect in the vascular wall which leads to an extravascular hematoma and this hematoma freely communicates with that of the intravascular space. Okay, It does not involve all the layers of the blood vessel. Example being ventricular rupture after myocardial infarction which is contained by a pericardial adhesion. That's a pseudo aneurysm. Or leak at the sutured junction of a vascular graft with a natural artery. That's an example of false aneurysm. Now, whether it is a true aneurysm or false aneurysm, both types of aneurysms can rupture, which can lead to catastrophic consequences. Now, macroscopically, aneurysms can also be categorized based on shape. Remember that these are not specific for any particular disease. So they are based on shape, they are classified as saccular aneurysm and fusiform type of aneurysms. So this is a saccular aneurysm where there is a spherical outpouching which involves a portion of a vessel wall. Okay, Example being intracranial aneurysms like berry aneurysms. Whereas fusiform aneurysm is something which involves diffusely circumferential dilatation of a long vascular segment. That's a fusiform aneurysm. Now, based on mechanisms of aneurysms, they can be categorized as atherosclerotic aneurysms, syphilitic aneurysms, mycotic aneurysms, that means because of infections, or dissecting aneurysm. That's a dissecting aneurysm. In this case, what happens, you know, the blood enters the separated wall or the dissected wall and it travels for a particular distance. That is dissecting aneurysm. Now, what is the pathogenesis of aneurysm? Pathogenesis you need to understand that the structural and functional integrity of the blood vessels is maintained by the components of the extracellular matrix where you know the synthesis the degradation and repair of extracellular matrix is being done regularly to maintain the structure and functional integrity of the blood vessel now whenever there is a compromise in these aspects that leads to aneurysm now let us see what are all the defects which can result in compromise of these synthesis, degradation and repair of extracellular matrix which leads to aneurysm. The defects include, the first one is the vascular wall connective tissue itself is of poor quality. Now when does that happen? That happens whenever there is a defective type 3 collagen synthesis. Example being Ehler-Danlos syndrome. Second one is, second defect is abnormal transforming growth factor beta signaling. Okay, what, what does that do? It basically alters the vascular wall remodeling. This is often found in cases of Marfan syndrome. The third one, whenever there is a balance of, you know, collagen degradation and collagen synthesis is altered, that can also lead to aneurysm. This alteration is basically by inflammation and associated proteases. Now, what are these? It could be because of increased production of matrix metalloproteinases are because of decreased expression of TIMPs, tissue inhibitors of metalloproteinases. So whenever there is gene polymorphisms involving these genes, MMP and TIMP genes, that results in alteration of the balance between the collagen degradation and synthesis, which can weaken the wall and then resulting in aneurysm. But the last one is loss of smooth muscle cells or inappropriate synthesis of non-collagenous or non-elastic extracellular matrix. So that basically weakens the vessel wall, usually seen in the cases of tertiary syphilis where 
there is obliterative end arteritis of the vessels in the vasa vasorum and that results in medial ischemia which subsequently leads to smooth muscle cell loss smooth muscle cell loss leading to muscle weakness the wall weakness and thereby resulting in formation of an aneurysm so these are all the various mechanisms by by which aneurysm can occur apart from these there are other risk factors that weaken the vessel wall which includes advanced stage smoking trauma vasculitis congenital defects and infections now let's study in detail about the aortic aneurysm so we know that the different parts of aorta right the ascending aorta the arch of aorta the descending aorta which is divided into thoracic aorta and abdominal aorta so aneurysms occurring as a consequence of atherosclerosis form most commonly in the abdominal aorta and common iliac arteries so let us see about the abdominal aortic aneurysms so these abdominal aortic aneurysms are more common in men and smokers morphologically they are located in between the renal arteries and the bifurcation of aorta they can be either sacular or fusiform type morphologically usually more than 3 cm can be up to 25 cm in diameter these variants are one is inflammatory abdominal aortic aneurysms which accounts for around 5 to 10% of cases where there will be abundant lymphoplasmocytic inflammation with lot of macrophages and even jain cells this is basically because of localized immune response to the abdominal aortic wall usually seen in younger patients the second variant is immunoglobulin g4 related disease igg4 related disease so what you see here you find story form fibrosis and ig4 igg4 positive infiltrating plasma cells in these affected tissues they also have very high circulating levels of immunoglobulin g4 and they respond very well to steroid and anti b cell therapies the third one is mycotic abdominal aortic aneurysms so these are the aneurysms where the lesions are infected and because they are infected they are more prone for destruction of the vessel wall and because they are more prone for destruction they are more prone for rupture now what are the clinical manifestations of aneurysms they are often asymptomatic they on palpation they can be you know uh, felt as a pulpa- pulsating abdominal mass but then there are a lot of effects of these aneurysms you know which can lead to catastrophic consequences the first one being rupture usually ruptures into the peritoneal cavity or retroperitoneal tissues with massive potentially fatal hemorrhage okay the risk of rupture is directly related to the size of aneurysm so let us see that see if the size of aneurysm is less than 4 cm the risk of rupture is almost negligent or nil if it is 4 to 5 cm the risk of rupture is 1% per year it increases to 11% per year if the size of aneurysm is 5 to 6 cm and it increases to 25% per year if the size of aneurysm is more than 6 cm so the next important effect is obstruction of the branch vessel okay and that lead to downstream tissue ischemic injury for example iliac vessels can be obstructed leading to ischemia so the renal vessels can be obstructed the mesenteric and the vertebral vessels can be obstructed the third important one being embolism and embolism is basically from the atheroma or the mural thrombus within the aneurysmal sac now compression can also have occur and compression of the ureter or erosion of vertebrae can be a manifestation of abdominal aneurysm now how do you manage aneurysms or abdominal aneurysms so aneurysm more than 5 cm are usually managed very aggressively by uh, it could be by open surgery with prosthetic grafts or stent graft via endoscopic approach see the operative mortality even if it is asymptomatic when they operate on these aneurysms mortality will be approximately around 5% but if the operation is done after rupture the mortality is approximately 50%. Now let's move on to understand the thoracic aortic aneurysm. These are most commonly associated with hypertension, other causes being Marfan syndrome, low ADH syndrome and aortitis. The symptoms of thoracic thoracic aortic aneurysm majority of the cases they are asymptomatic, but then if they are symptomatic that's because of compression or because of secondary catastrophic events. Now compression depends upon the site of compression, the manifestations depends upon the site of compression. If the compression is of the bone or encroachment or bone erosion then they present with chest pain 
the compression is at the level of coronary vessels it can result in myocardial ischemia if the esophagus is compressed it, it results in difficulty in swallowing if the recurrent laryngeal nerve is compressed it results in hoarseness of voice and the bronchi are compressed that leads to respiratory complications now the last type of aneurysm we will be studying today is syphilitic aneurysm also referred to as leotic aneurysm it is seen in the tertiary stage of syphilis more common in men and ascending aorta and aortic arch aneurysm are more common because syphilitic aortitis is more common in proximal aorta so the pathogenesis of syphilitic aneurysm is basically because of inflammation around the vasa vasorum of the adventitia that resulting in end arteritis obliterans end arteritis obliterans because this is basically an uh, arteritis of the end vessel leading to obstruction or obliteration of the lumen wall and that leads to ischemic injury of the media okay leading to weakening of the vessel wall and finally aneurysms right so this is the pathogenesis of syphilitic aneurysm so morphologically as i told you ascending aorta and aortic arch are the more com most common site involved in syphilitic type of aneurysm often sacular can be fusiform at times usually around 3 to 5 cm in diameter intimal surface is characteristically wrinkled and that's called tree bark appearance very classical feature of syphilitic aortitis now if the aortic valve is involved what happens that results in incompetence of these valves because of incompetence there will be volume overload leading to enlargement of the heart and that is referred to as cor bovinum so microscopically all the features of syphilitic aortitis is seen in even in this aneurysmal vessel wall where you find inflammatory infiltrates which are rich in plasma cells lymphocytes and macrophages adventitia show fibrous thickening and end arteritis of the vaso vasorum and the effects of syphilitic aneurysm is just like that of any other type any other type of aneurysm like you know rupture the symptoms because of compression and cardiac manifestations so that completes a topic on aneurysm we studied what is the definition of aneurysm the various types the pathogenesis and about the abdominal thoracic and ascending aorta aneurysms thank you